In this lecture, presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to practice our first and second derivative tests by analyzing the function f of x equals x of the fifth minus 5x. Now these problems are always going to start out the same. We're going to be looking for where it's increasing, decreasing, the concavity, the inflection points, and the extrema, the whole nine yards. We're always going to start with the first derivative, which is 5x to the fourth minus 5. And then we're going to set this equal to zero because this is going to give us our critical points, which we can then determine if they're inflection points or if they are absolute max or maximums or minimums. So 5x to the fourth minus 5, this is 5x to the fourth equals positive 5 x to the fourth equals 1, which means that x is going to be equal to plus or minus 1. Those are going to be our extreme, our critical points. X equals positive one and negative one. Now we, get to now we can determine whether we're increasing or decreasing everywhere on the graph by knowing these critical points. We set up a table that goes from negative infinity to negative one, from negative one to positive one, and from positive one to positive infinity. And we're going to pick test values in each of these ranges, and we're going to put them back into our second derivative, which I just erased. And the reason we're going to do this is that if we have a negative value in our answer for the second derivative, that means it's decreasing because a negative decreasing means there's a negative slope to the tangent line, which means we must have a decreasing. The only place where this can change occurs at our critical points, so we only need one value to determine whether we're increasing or decreasing on an interval. So we plug all the test values in and we just look for the positive and negative signs. So we'll find f prime of negative 2 equals 5 to the negative 2 to the fourth power minus 5. Uh, this is going to be equal to, what's it, 2 times 2 is 4 times 8. This will be equal to 16, but it's that's irrelevant because it's going to be positive. 5 times 16 minus 5, that's very easily a positive value. We don't need to know anything more beyond that. Now we'll do the same thing. Well, because we have to the, uh, to the fourth power, we can very easily put positive 2 in and realize that's a positive value as well. But the nice thing is, is we can put 0 in and very quickly determine that this is going to be equal to negative 5. So we got positive, negative, and positive. We're increasing from negative infinity to 1. We're decreasing from negative 1 to positive 1 and we're increasing from positive 1 to infinity. And where you go from increasing to decreasing, that means you must have a maximum. And where you go from decreasing to increasing, you have a minimum. So we have a min at positive 1, and we have a max at negative 1. So now we found the intervals of increasing and decreasing. We found our minimums and maximums. Now let's find our concavities and inflection points. To find that, we're going to need the second derivative, which is going to tell us the rate of change of the rate of change, or the curvature. This is going to be 20x to the third, and the minus 5 drops out, and we got to set that equal to 0 which of course is only going to occur at x equals 0. So now we do the same thing with the table. We're going to do negative infinity to 0 and from 0 to positive infinity and pick some test values, say negative 1 and positive 1. If we put negative 1 into x to the third, it becomes negative on the outside. This is negative 20, which is negative, which means you have concave down Positive 1 is going to clearly give a positive number out, so this is going to be concave up. And whenever you switch from concave down to concave up, you have an inflection point. Uh, 
So we know we are. So we now know we are increasing from negative infinity to negative one. We are decreasing from negative one to positive one. And we are increasing from positive one to positive infinity. We are concave down from negative infinity to zero. And we are concave up from zero to positive infinity. We know our inflection points. We know our minimums and our maximums. So this gives us the ability to sketch, sketch the graph at this point. One, one, two, two. All right, so maximum, minimum occurs at positive one. So let's draw a point, say somewhere down here. And we have a maximum at negative one, occurs somewhere over here. We know that the function is going to go through zero at f of x equals zero. And we can also determine the other places where it goes to zero if you solve the first of the original function. But now we're going to be concave down from negative infinity to zero. It will be concave up from zero to positive infinity. We also know that we're decreasing along this interval and we're increasing on the other intervals. So this is going to look an awful lot like what we'd get if we had x to the third. Try to sketch this a little bit better. And this will be approximately what our graph looks like. So we found everything that this problem is asking for, and we sketch a graph. So we're good.